Yo YouTube, what is up? Scott Adamson here with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to get professional looking cabinets in your upcoming Sprinter van build. So let's roll that intro and we'll get started. So if you're currently building out a Sprinter van or you're looking to start building one, you already know or you're about to learn that building out one of these vans is a ton of work. And sometimes you put in all of that effort and at the end of the day, you don't get the finished product that you were hoping to achieve. And it wasn't for a lack of effort or trying. It's just sometimes you don't know which products you should be using and how to properly use them. So in today's video, I'm going to go over a product that I found that I think really levels up my cabinet game in my second van build that I'm working on. One of the most common things that I see DIY van builders sort of rush on and don't do the best job they possibly could is their cabinet paint job. They think that this is going to be a quick, easy part of the van build. Let me tell you from past experience, if you want to do a good job, it's not quick and it's not easy. If you want to do a good job, it is actually super time consuming. On my last van build, which has painted cabinets, which have held up amazing over the past four years, they included four coats of paint and that's all on the white painted surfaces and then all of the stain surfaces they included one coat of stain and then three or four coats of clear polyurethane and in between each one of those coats included a full sanding with between like a 200 and 400 grit sandpaper before the last coat was applied it was a ton of work yes the finished product did turn out very good but it's one thing most people do not take the time to do properly i see so many vans when people rush the paint job and after only a few short months I go into their vans and it looks like they've been living out of that van for 10 years. All of the cabinets are marked and scuffed and because they didn't put on enough paint and let it properly dry in between coats they're unable to wipe it off without absolutely ruining the finish on their cabinet. So if you are going to use paint make sure that you properly prep your wood, you do many coats and you sand in between each coat giving it the proper amount of time to dry. So even though on my first van build I did use paint, I did take my time, it did turn out amazing and I am super happy with it. On this van build I wasn't quite as patient and I didn't want to take all the time that it took to properly sand and paint all of the cabinet faces and when I mean that's all of them that's front and back of all of the cabinet drawers doors uh, it's endless if you're painting so I discovered this new product that I'm super excited about so far and things are going really well and that product is called high pressure laminate or HPL for short so what is high pressure laminate I don't know exactly what it is it's some kind of composite material but you're gonna be most familiar with it you know when people have laminate countertops or like fake granite countertops that's essentially what this is it's a laminate product it comes in these big sheets and it doesn't just come in these like kind of cheesy granite countertop patterns it comes in hundreds and hundreds of different possible combinations from solid colors to wood grains to unique patterns it's unbelievable the flexibility that you have with this product I think if you wanted to, you could actually go totally custom. The company that I found that has a supplier that's actually local to me is called Wilson Art. And after doing some more research, Wilson Art seems to be one of the leaders in this industry. Another one that I found is Formica, but Wilson Art seems to have the most color selection. And luckily for me, I had a local supplier. So even though they had to bring some of the stuff in, they did stock a few colors, like the all white that I'm using on the insides of all the cabinets, which is pretty handy because it makes it so I don't have to be as exact with my material takeoffs and then worry about delayed times for shipping if I need to reorder. So one of the things that's been stopping me about making a lot of these videos is on this van build I am learning so many new things and it's a lot of frustration so it takes me a while before I kind of get a good grasp on these new products before I really feel comfortable about sharing a if they're a product you should use and b how I've been applying them and I feel like with the high pressure laminate I've done enough of it at this point where I'm pretty confident pretty happy with it so I'm going to dive in and kind of show you how it looks and how I've been installing it on the cabinet faces in my build. When it comes to high pressure laminate it does come in various sizes and thicknesses. I've basically just been buying it in four by eight sheet. I have no idea if that's the most common, but based on the supplier I'm dealing with, that's sort of what they recommended. So I've been buying it in four by eight sheets and I've been buying what they call the vertical grade. I think it's a slightly thinner grade than the other grade. I don't know what it's called. So I've been buying four by eight sheets, a vertical grade. It seems to be working perfectly for this application. Once I get it on, it's unbelievably strong, feels super durable. So it's working for me. 
All right, let's now jump into how I've been installing the high pressure laminate on the cabinet bases. Step number one is to sort of set up a workstation where you can comfortably work with the four by eight sheet of wood. What I've been doing is using two sawhorses and setting up a four by eight sheet of OSB as kind of my cutting station and then laying my sheet of the laminate on top of that to sort of work with. Once I have the four by eight sheet ready to go, I've been taking my cabinet pieces and sort of laying them and mapping them out on the piece to sort of make sure I can maximize and limit my waste of the laminate. So I lay everything all out and once I have a layout that I think is going to waste the least amount of product then I just use a pencil and I just trace around all of the outer edges and this way when I lift them off I can see exactly where my cut lines need to be. Once I have my cut lines all marked and I remove all the pieces I've just been using a skill saw. I have this battery powered Makita skill saw and I'm putting a 90 tooth blade in it in reverse and I'm just using that to rough cut everything out. I set the blade just barely thicker so it just goes in to the OSB underneath and that just quickly rough cuts everything out. I'm not trying to be too exact here. I'm just trying to get the shapes so they're manageable. So when I do go to put everything together, I have the right shapes in the right places. So again, skill saw, 90 tooth blade in reverse for rough cutting out the high pressure laminate. A little pro tip, I did make this mistake. I was able to salvage it. When you are laying your shapes out and tracing them, I'm using one color on one side and then white on all the insides. Make sure you have the shape on it in the right orientation so that when you trace it out and cut it you're not kind of opposite of what it should be i did make that mistake once just because i wasn't thinking and just working too quickly once you have your wood pieces all ready to go and you've got all your laminate rough cut out now it's time to start the gluing process so this is when i grab my paint sprayer as i mentioned in a previous video i've been using my paint sprayer for my paint sprayer for a ton of things on this van build and it's all glue. I'm just running glue through it for all the upholstery and all the high pressure laminate work that we're doing. The glue that I'm using is a contact cement from jackson.ca. I'm not sure if it's the right product for this. It's been working for all the panels and they are not coming apart, not a chance. Once I've got the gun loaded up with glue, I like to set up my station so I've got my wood piece and my piece of laminate sort of side by side. And then I start by spraying a thin layer over top of the wood and then a thin layer over top of the laminate. You're gonna wanna wait a few minutes to let the the contact cement get close to dry so it's you know just a little bit tacky to the touch but it's not sort of gummy and wet and once it's at that point it's ready to stick the two together once it's time to put them together what i like to do is i like to take slats of plywood these are just off cuts from the various cabinets and things we've been cutting you could probably cut them so they were all the same size it would make things a little bit easier but these are just scraps so i lay all the scraps down on the wood piece and that makes it so when i position the laminate over top before i'm ready to do the final stick i can make sure that my overhangs and everything everything lines up properly because once the laminate touches the wood that contact cement is super sticky and you might not be able to lift it up to reposition and you might have to redo the piece. As soon as I'm happy with the location and the overhang I like to start by pulling out the stick in the middle of the laminate and I stick the middle down so I know that's not going to move and then I work my way from one from the middle to one edge and then I start from the middle and go to the other edge. Once I have everything stuck down we've been using a tile roller to just sort of roll over everything. When using the tile roller, be careful that you don't push too hard and you don't push beyond the plywood because you don't want to snap the overhang of the laminate, which I haven't done but I could see how that's possible if you're not careful with the towel roller. After you have the two pieces stuck together, you are gonna have an overhang the whole way around. Now kind of comes the most satisfying part of the whole thing. What we've been doing is we take what's called the flush cut bit and we've been putting that in the router and you just make sure you set your depth. The flush cut bit has a ball bearing that actually rides on the face of the plywood and it cuts the high pressure laminate perfectly flush with your, your cabinet face. I do recommend before you do it on a piece that you spent hours scribing and sanding and test fitting and scribing and sanding and test fitting that you do it on a scrap piece first because we, we did it on a scrap piece and we made a couple mistakes. We've got it dialed in now and it works awesome but I wouldn't have wanted to make that mistake on a piece that took us almost an entire day to get ready. So before you flush cut any of your actual pieces just test it on a few pieces. Make sure you understand how the router works and how the flush cut bit works in it. Once you got it figured out works awesome. It does make a little bit of a mess because it is chewing a ton of material off but it leaves you with a super 
super clean, super nice, super even finish. Overall, when you're done, I think the finished product is amazing. I'm super happy with how it turns out. It really gives that van kind of that professional upfitter feel. And I honestly think it's like a 10th of the time that painting is. You don't have to do multiple coats and you don't have to wait for it to dry in between coats. And it looks perfect. It looks immaculate. There's no brush strokes. There's no roller marks. There's no dust that came into the paint while it was drying. There's no rough spots, high spots. Everything just looks perfect. So I think it's way quicker. I think at the end of the day, if it's a, a look that you like, perfect. There's no imperfections. And yeah, I'm just super happy with it. So if you're looking for a really high-end professional look to finish off your Sprinter Van cabinets, I really recommend taking a look at some of the high-pressure laminate products and specifically the Wilson Art ones or the ones that I'm working with. I'm super happy with them. Oh yeah, if you haven't already, you know what to do. Click that subscribe button in this video. We'll see you in the next one.